here at uh, New Frontiers 2016 with um, Scott Nolan from Founders Fund, and I get the chance to talk Scott to I uh, talk to Scott about a few things that um, we've been discussing here and uh, some of his insights into what um, key entrepreneurs can do in the States and what international uh, investors and entrepreneurs can do in New Zealand. So, hey Scott, hey. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on what are the uh, unique elements that you're seeing um, of New Zealand entrepreneurs um, that you've invested in that um, you don't see much elsewhere in the world? Yeah, great question. So. We've invested in, you know, uh, a couple, well, we've invested in a number of companies outside the U.S., New Zealand being one of them. And one company we invested in New Zealand recently was called Adai, um, and they are a virtual reality capture startup. And so, obviously, we love the team, we love what they're doing, but I think to get back to your question about why New Zealand, for us, we asked the same question. It was, you know, we were looking a lot at virtual reality, asking ourselves, what is going to be the next great company? And we thought it would be Adai because they had this great tech technology expertise in doing human capture within virtual reality. And it actually turned out that the reason the company was here was because there was a lot of local expertise in Wellington around, you know, uh, cinematography, uh, digital reproduction, visual effects. And a lot of that came out of Weta Digital and the expertise that was built around that in the Lord of the Rings franchise. And so that was something where it turned out that because there was this great expertise in this one sector, this awesome company had come together and had built out that team. So I'd say oftentimes, you know, for New Zealand, it'll, I think it'll get back to what are the areas where New Zealand has great talents and great expertise in certain sectors, whether that's visual effects or agriculture, the primary industries, uh, you know, composites, like there's a really long list. And so I think that's one aspect. Another aspect is what are the things that make New Zealand unique relative to other countries? And I think it's things like a very open and accessible government. So anyone who's creating products that need to work with the government or sell to the government, I think there's a huge advantage here. Um, and that could even be things like the drone industry where there's a lot clearer regulation around what to do. And the, the government's very forward thinking and yes, let's let's support this work. So um, to us, New Zealand's a really interesting place because there is this, you know, these special types of expertise. Um, and that's not to say that we can predict where the next great company will come from, in which sector it'll come from, but we're open to meeting people across all different sectors and uh, excited to, to see what people are doing. Yeah, and I guess the good news for us is that the, the next big um, company could uh, obviously come from New Zealand, given by your um, you know, investment in some of the New Zealand companies. So, Scott, I know that um, you travel to New Zealand a lot mm -hmm. and that you've spent quite a bit of time here. Um, what would you say to other um, fellow um, you know, American investors or even like investors and entrepreneurs from around the world about um, you know, coming to New Zealand and either starting a business here or investing here? Like, what, what have you observed? What, what is really cool about the way we do things here in New Zealand? Yeah, good question. So I'd say, I'd say to the investors, I think first, more and more investors are realizing that the next great company will come outside of Silicon Valley or even outside the U.S. and even outside of anywhere they've ever been. And so then you ask yourself, well, then where should we be, we, where should we be looking for these companies? And I think a lot of people have talked a lot about, you know, places like Stockholm and Berlin. Obviously, those have become startup hubs. I think then the question is, well, where's, where's the next hub? And I think Wellington could certainly be one of them. Um, I was doing a talk about a year ago um, in Wellington and was shocked by how many people showed up to the panel that we had uh, with Rod and Sam. And I was on it also. And uh, Brian and Matthew were there. Yeah. And... We, after the fact, we calculated, okay, wait, there were a lot of people there. What percent of the, like, the city population was that? And it was something like a percent of the city had showed up for this startup-related event. So right. it's definitely something that's at the forefront here, and a really great community is being built. And even at ADI, um, you know, I was there at the company yesterday and talking to people about what they were working on, and it turned out that um, a lot of the people at ADI now had come from other startups in Wellington or in mm -hmm. Auckland. And so I think one of the things I thought a couple of years ago or even last year was, yes, it feels like New Zealand is, is only a couple of years away from having this vibrant ecosystem. And I think we're seeing the start of it where people are at startups, 
are leaving those to go join other startups. And now that starts building on itself and it's a very reinforcing sort of cycle. And so I think we're right in the middle of that right now. So it's almost tipping point sort of uh, story for, for Wellington, uh, hopefully. It feels that way. Awesome. Hey, now that a lot of our startups and entrepreneurs follow you on Twitter and obviously um, you know, the exciting stuff that you do at, at Founders Fund, and the question that always comes up when we talk to them is, especially the ones that want to head over to the States to maybe try and close an investment round, uh, they're always like, oh, you know, what do we need to do to, to close the round in, uh, in the States? And I wanted to take the opportunity and ask you a different question. It's like, what are the top three things that you think people shouldn't do when they go and um, you know try and raise investment um, in the states, and and just riffing off your um, talk uh, that you did last year about you know the things that you you shouldn't shouldn't do. I think it'd be really cool to repeat some of the things that you shouldn't do because there's a lot of material out there about you know what you should do. But there's also I know I remember from the talk there's a few things that you absolutely shouldn't do. Mm. Yeah, and I'd say the the advice isn't really different for New Zealand startups than you know U.S. startups or L.A. startups or you know, Minneapolis startups, it's, it's really, you know, what's the best way to raise money? I think there's a lot of material out there online about, about what to do. I think, um, you know, specific pieces of feedback I give on what not to do are the most frequent mistakes that are very hard to know in advance. I would say, number one, the U.S. Uh, investment cycle, like throughout the year, does go in waves. And so it is often harder to raise in July and August and, you know, November and December. So don't, if you can avoid it, don't try and start your fundraising efforts then. Yeah. So those are slower periods. You want to start in January, February, March, or do a quick fundraise in September, October if you can. That's going to probably give the best results. Um, I think you also have to realize the investors aren't trying to be extremely formal. They're just trying to evaluate all the great companies out there and, and really get to know the people. So I'd say when meeting investors and when pitching, just talk about your business as it is and be honest about it and don't try and have some pitched like monologue that you want to go through you know a lot of, I've heard it said before we don't want to do a presentation we want a conversation and so you don't have to be extremely formal you don't have to wear suits it's really about you know this is a part of your business it's fundraising just as operations are and so just treat it as any other part of your business and uh, try and build those relationships with investors and help them understand what you're doing awesome really good points um, last question probably um, you know, where's the future for you? Where, where do you see some really cool trends emerging that, that you guys are looking at at Founders Fund and um, some some of the larger um, sort of mega trends or, or disruptive technologies that you see coming our way? Yeah, so I would say we try to not think too much in terms of trends. So we definitely see trends. But for us, once a trend is already obvious and there's a huge number of companies that define that trend, then it's likely you might have already missed that that great company. Right. So I'd say the best trends are the ones that are so early now that we don't even, we can't even identify them or give them a name. Often it's that one company that defines its own space. Mm. Um, so we are seeing really interesting stuff in manufacturing, in biotech, uh, in energy generation. Um, these are investments we made recently that, that we think are, are gonna do really well. And so, um, yeah, I would say it'll be many things that are very different from from what people have been working on in the past. So, uh, yeah, just to summarize, I would say we're seeing interesting things in materials over the last year. New types of materials, companies that are making, you know, stronger, more durable metals or, uh, you know, spider silks for stronger and more flexible fiber types. Yep. Um, we're seeing things in energy generation that are carbon-free energy generation or storage. Um, and we're seeing things in financial technologies to to help you know make those systems much more effective awesome hey thank you so much scott um really hope that we see you again soon in new zealand and um to hear more about um all of the amazing stuff you're doing at founders fund great cheers thank you, thank you.